thing. Do not use external resources for the discussion. That means you have to give some definitions based on the book or on the notes that you're reading. Don't try to check for the definitions online because those definitions could be different ones. There are some words that have more than one meaning and the, um, and the definitions that you find could be not the ones for, um, from the book. And one more thing, probably the most important one. You need to type at least 400 words. If you type less than 400 words, we're going to take 10 points away from the, from, the, from the post. So keep that in mind. I'm going to type that. 10 point penalty for not submitting 400 words. Okay, guys, any questions about what do you have for, for Sunday? Okay, so now we're going to go for the logic part, what I need to explain to you. First of all, we're going to have statements. The first part of logic always concerns about, is concerned about statements. So they are full sentences or expressions that can be um, translated Mm, two full sentences they are full sentences um, that have a truth value so they can be either true or false or you can check uh, in some form if they are true or false. Okay, guys, based on the definition, I have here three sentences. Which one of the three sentences or which ones are, um, are statements and which ones are not? Zach is saying that number two is a statement. Jonathan says that number one and two are statements, okay. James is saying that number one and two. So everyone, so three people agree that number two is a statement. So number two is a statement. Since you can check uh, it is true or false. Go and check. Uh, Jesse, be careful. If you're saying Boolean, actually it means that it's a statement. Because Boolean works with uh, ones and zeros, and logic works with true or false, which is almost the same, or actually the same. True is one, false is zero. And no number three is not Boolean, so it is not logic, it is not a statement. Since it is a question, the answer to the question is a, a statement. Uh, now for number one, that's going to be a uh, good question, Jesse. Does sales means best? So it is a subjective thing. Since best represents an opinion, it is not possible to say uh, that it is a um, statement. 
Okay, so you have to be careful there. Mm. This one. X plus 5 is greater than or equal to 10. Is this a statement? Three people say, well, two people say yes, and one person says, I do believe so, which actually I think it's yes. I'm going to tell you, be careful. No. It is not a statement. Since we don't know the value of x, if x is 5 or more, then it would be true. If x is less than 5, it is false. But we don't know exactly what x is. Only the solution to that inequality, yes. Here we're saying the addition of a number on 5 is greater or equal to 10. But the problem is we don't know the number. Yes, Jesse. It's either true or false. It's either 1 or 0. It's either yes or no. We're going to be working with true, false, 1, 0. There is not going to be anything in between. Anything that is in between is not part of logic, is not a statement, so we don't want to, to worry about it. Now, we represent uh, statements, well, actually single statements, with variables. And the most commonly used uh, uh, letters are P, Q, R, things like those. Remember, single statements. Single statements is only one small phrase with subject, verb, and predicate that is either true or false. And in logic, the, the standard way is we always use P and Q and then the following letters. In algebra, you always use X, Y, Z, and then keep looking for letters. So that's the reason we use P and Q, it's a standard. And I'm going to make here a couple of examples. Statement P. I'm going to make up a statement P that is going to be mm, dogs bark. Can you tell me, is this a statement true or false? It is true. Now, it is going to be represented with a T when it is true. Q. Elephants fly. It is an F. It is false. Okay, guys. Questions about the statements and variables. Okay, find the catapult first, William. Okay, guys, questions about statements or variables? How does it look so far? Does it look good, bad, horrible, terrible? You want to cry yet? Okay, Jesse, that's a good answer. Okay. Now, we're going to be working with operations. Operations are uh, join um, statements. Ooh. And when um, single statement 
is joined with an operation, we have a compound state. Or actually, we can say uh, two or more logic symbols represent a compound state. First operation, probably the easiest one, negation. And you can see, this is a squiggly thing called a tilde. So the negation, what, what it does is um, changes the value. It changes the truth value of the statement by including the word not uh, to it. So it is as basic as that. Now, I'm going to copy and paste uh, the, the statements that I have. And I'm going to create uh, a couple. So here, this is not P. Can you tell me what is not P? Uh, no, Stephen, no, Douglas. We're, uh, P and Q are not related. I'm only saying that if we have P, what is going to be not P? Um, Jonathan, we're talking about dogs here. So dogs uh, do not bark. No, Jesse, we're saying that they don't park. We don't know if they do something else. We're only including the word not. Don't try to do anything else. Do not assume something that, could, uh, that couldn't be or could probably not be. So be careful. If you have a, a statement, the negation is only saying no. Are you tall? Yes, no. So if I'm saying uh, you are tall, it is true. Now, you're not tall implies that you're not tall. That's all. But I'm not saying that you're, that, that you're short or you're something else. So be careful. Now, remember, the, the truth value changes. So P says that dog's bark is true. So here, the statement is going to be false. What is not Q? Elephants do not fly. Oh, uh, guys, I'm using the uppercase letters for the words just to emphasize. You don't have to do it. If you want, it's okay, but you don't have to. Now, this statement is true or false. This is going to be true because the original one, elephants fly, is false. So you're correct, guys. Second operation that you need, conjunction. Here, this is the symbol, the caret. And the caret is usually shift six on the, on, the, um, uh, on the keyboard. Oh, by the way, the squiggly thing here, the tilde, is usually besides the one on the, uh, on the, on the keyboard. So conjunction, uh, it joins two statements with the word and. The compound statement is true only if both um, single state, if all the statements are true. And it is false if at least one of the, nah, it's Better if I say single statements. If at least one of the single statements is false. I'm going to say here. It is only if both single statements are true. Okay, guys. So think about this like...
Yes, yes, yes. This is uh, this is the same thing as uh, logic in basic programming. Symbols change. Yes, uh, for some for some uh, programs you can use here uh, the and or double and percent, depending on on. But it's basically the same thing. For negation, you can use uh, the, the exclamation mark. Yes. Now think about the about the conjunction, as um, you have to accomplish everything that you want. If you don't, if you don't accomplish at least one thing, you failed. Uh, well, I guess you're taking only one class this month. But if you're taking two classes, well, in order to keep going, you need to pass both classes. But if you fail one. Immediately, your uh, your statement, your compound statement is false, and then you have to repeat and start struggling uh, with your uh, with your major. Now, using the examples that I have from above, I'm going to say P and Q. The statement here is going to be dogs bark and elephants fly. Tell me. Is this compound statement, P and Q, true or false? So many truths, a couple of falses. Another false. So I have like, I have three falses and like three truths. Jonathan, a no sack. Be careful. We're not talking here about negation. We're talking about the and. And the rule says if at least one of the single statements is false, which the second is, uh, the compound statement is going to be false. Third operation, disjunction. For some people, I remember that the OR in programming is a, the bar, the vertical bar. But here, we're going to be using a V, or a symbol that represents the V. And this is almost the same thing as conjunction. It joins two statements with uh, the word OR. The compound statement is true when at least one of the single statements is true and it is false only when or only if both statements, if both single statements. If both single statements are false. Now, think about um, trying to if you accomplish something here, it is going to be good. But if you don't accomplish anything, it is going to be bad. You want to go to the mall or go to the movies. If you complete both, it is not a problem. It is actually good. So it is going to be true, Jonathan. That's the answer for your question. If they are both true, then it is going to be true. But if you fail to do both things, it is false. If you don't go to the mall, if you don't go to the movies, then you're lazy, you didn't do anything, there is a mistake there because you promised you were going to do something. If you do both, better. Now, this disjunction here is inclusive. It is not exclusive. Sometimes uh, an exclusive, a, there are o, a exclusive ors where you can do only one or one or a, one of the two things. Like for example, um, 
I'm going to the movies at five or I'm going to the mall at five. You can do both at the same time. It is impossible because those two things are at five. Unless, well, the movies are at the mall, but, that does, but if you go to the movies, you are not shopping at the mall, but well, that's different. So for here, for this class, we're gonna be talking about the uh, inclusive, where both statements, where when both single statements are true, the answer is true. So we have P or Q. Dogs bark or elephants fly. Now, is this compound statement true or false? Jonathan says true, James says true, Jesse says true, William says true, Zach says true, Douglas says true. James say it is true because dogs bark. That's what you thought too. Mm, interesting. I was just waiting to see if somebody was gonna jump and say something about the false thing that I said just because I wanted to mess with you. But yes, it is true. So you all are correct. I just wanted to stir you a little bit. Okay, guys, questions about negation, conjunction or disjunction. That's what I always try to do. Try to, to make things straightforward. Awesome that it makes sense. It is a time to ask for questions because the next one is the complicated one. It is the implication. Oh, good, William. Thank you. Okay, implication. It joins two single statements with uh, the word then and include the word if before the first statement. So it is um, cause, effect, relationship, uh, where the first thing, where if the first thing happens, the second one, oh, happens. If the first thing happens, then the second must happen. And if the first thing does not happen, it does not matter. Okay, guys, look at this. This explanation is different. Um, here, if we have, the, if the first statement is true, then the second statement must be true. So that's what happens here. And then, if the first thing uh, does not happen, then it doesn't matter. You can have the second one. It could be true or false. So, in those cases, Uh, the compound statement is true. The implication is only false 
when the first statement is no, it's true, and the second one is false. It does not make sense that if the cause happens, then the effect does not happen. Okay, guys, think about the remote. So you press the power button on the remote, and then the TV has to turn on or turn off. If you press it, and the TV turns on, or turns on or turns off, perfect. It is working perfectly. It is doing what it has to do. However, if you press the button, and the TV doesn't turn on, you scream, and you say, what happened here? It doesn't make sense. It's because there is a problem. Uh, the batteries are low, uh, the remote is broken, the TV is unplugged, the TV is broken, something like that. In that case, the statement is going to be false because um, the first thing is happening and the second is not. So that's the, the idea you have to use. Now, talking about dogs and elephants. So the statement could be P implies, uh, P implies Q. So uh, the symbol is an arrow. To make the arrow, we make the dash and the greater than. <laughs> yeah, that happens, Jonathan. OK, so P implies Q is if dogs bark, then elephants fly. Can you tell me this, um, if, this proposal, if this statement is true or false? Jesse says false. James says, says false. Uh, 26, a numpad. Oh, but they don't have a, a numpad, so. <laughs> um, be careful, Zach. Remember, we're using the operations and we're using logic. In this case, we're not using what makes sense or if things are, um, yeah, if things make sense. This is not about making sense. This is about the rules of logic. Actually, the explanation that James is giving us is really good. It has, it has to be polished, but I think it is false because the second does not happen after the first one is true. That's what happens here. It doesn't matter if dogs bark, elephants fly, check if the first one is true, the second one is false. So this is going to be false. Well, actually, Jonathan, the main, that's what I'm trying to do here. You have to make sure that you have things that are true and true. Uh, the second statement has to be false. If the second statement doesn't happen, if it does not occur, it's because you only have one statement. Does that make sense, Jesse? Okay. Now I'm changing the proposition here, the statements. If elephants fly, then dogs bark. Is this true or false? Yes, it says false. James says true. Steven says true. One false, two true. James says true. 
William says false because elephants cannot fly. So that's uh, true, got three boats, and false got two boats. It is true. If the first thing doesn't happen, or, well, if it's not true, then it doesn't matter. In those cases, the compound statement is true. That's a rule here. Okay? The, here, the, the, the cause is elephants fly. So if elephants fly, dogs bark, well, probably uh, that's not the reason. There is another reason why the dogs, uh, the dogs bark. So we don't care about that. That's uh, why we have this true. Because there could be any other reason, even though the, uh, the first one is false. It's like with the remote. Uh, you don't press the button, but the TV turns on. You just plug it. You just plug the TV, or probably you have another remote you can control with your uh, watch. Uh, it listen to, listens to you. Poltergeist, yeah, any other reason. So that's the important thing here. Okay, guys, questions about implication? Not making sense. What happens, Jesse? Yes. Well, it's not that if false, then do something. It is, uh, if it is false, the second thing can happen, no matter what happens with the first one, because there could be another reason for the second one to happen. Uh, well, Jesse, in this case, for programming, you only care about when the first one is true. For programming, it only, you only care about the first part when it is true. If the first one is true, then the second thing must happen. And if the second thing doesn't happen, it's because you have a mistake on your program. If you have the first part uh, that is false, well, you can do something else somewhere else. But, uh, the, but this first part is not uh, important for, for the second part. So that's the reason it is true. Because the first part is not important, we say it's true. Does that, does that make better sense, Jesse? Well, because the two things, yes, it, uh, well, when it is false, it is not a condition anymore. So that reason is not important. That's the main point there. You, in programming, you only care about when the first one is true. So if the first one is true and the second one is false, it's because there is a mistake. If the first thing is true and the second thing is true, then everything is correct. If the first thing is false, well, it is actually not related to the second one. Hmm. Yeah, think about it. Think about it and try to make sense about that. Okay, next part, exercises. Here I have the statement P, which is Peter is the president. And I have here a statement Q. Mary is a mathematician. Translate this. Two words to a verbal statement. I have a P, I have a carrot, I have a... Uh, tilde and I have a key. Two people with the same, no, three people with the same answer. Four, hold on, 
one, two, three, five people with the same answer. That's awesome. Peter is the president. And Mary is not a mathematician. Awesome, guys. That was a good answer. OK. Now, I have here this statement. Uh, no, this is not breaking bad. We're talking about mathematicians. We're not talking about anything else. Now, we have here, nah, yeah, that happens. OK, so now we have here a, a verbal statement. Your auto heater needs a new switch and either a new control or a new motor or both. Here, the, uh, you have to translate to symbolic form. But first, how many statements, how many single statements do we have? William says three, Zach says three. Yes, we're only using three statements. So I'm going to say P, I'm going to say Q, and I'm going to say R. What would be the first statement? The first single statement? Uh, Jonathan, be careful. What does need a new switch? The auto heater. Be careful. Statements are full sentences. They have to they they have to have their own meaning. When you say it needs a new switch, that there is a question here. What does need what does it need uh, a new switch? So always always uh, get uh, full sentences. So here it is. Uh, the auto heater needs a new switch. Second statement. Sack, you are correct. The auto heater needs a new switch, a new control. Third statement. The auto heater needs a new motor. Awesome. Now, translate to symbolic form. So use only symbols. Jonathan says P carat Q V R. William is saying P carat Q V R. Jesse is saying P vertical bar Q vertical bar R. OK. We have three people who agree with the answer. Jesse, I'm sorry, but there is a mistake there. This is going to be P and Q or R. Yes, Jesse, uh, the bar is OR. However, the first one here should be an AND. So that's a problem. Now, be careful, because here we have two separate things. So it is for sure that the auto heater needs a switch. But we need at least one of the other two. So we need to make sure that we're talking about those two. And in this case, we're going to use parentheses. For parentheses, you have to be like, you have to read carefully and check what happens. Sometimes uh, parentheses could, um, could imply some other things. Like in this case, uh, the first one is for sure. But the second, the, the second and the third, you can choose between one of them. So you need one of the, of the responses. Uh, yes, William. However, we're in logic. For the, for the quiz purposes, for mathematical purposes, we're going to be using the caret and the B. 
in programming, you can use the, the bar. But for the class purposes, for, for math, it is better to stick with the caret and the B. And the negation with the with tilde. Okay, I have here three single statements. P is Q is an element of A. Q is X is an element of B, and R is X is an element of C. Translate the following symbolic statements into verbal statements. I have here A. And I'm gonna I'm gonna help you. This is gonna be P and Q and R. William, that's incorrect. Um, Zach, I'm going to say that you are correct, but you're in the middle of something, which I'm not going to tell you yet. So, to make things easy, to avoid confusion, just copy what you have. What is P? A full statement. What is Q? A full statement. What is R? A full statement. So, in this case it would be X is an element of A and X is an element of B and X is an element of C. Ooh, I forgot the AND here. Sorry. Now, and I think a commas would look nice. Okay? Now, Zach, I'm, I told you that you're in the middle of something because you can simplify. But simplifying only a small part when you can simplify everything it's not like complete. So you can say X is an element of A, B, and C. Yes, Stephen. You can simplify that way. So both uh, statements are correct. What you, what you wrote w it was correct doesn't look right. That's, well, it doesn't look neat. But it is correct, Zach. So don't worry about it. What can you tell me about B? Jonathan, that is correct. X is an element of A, or X is an element of B, or X is not an element of C. Uh, why the case in Jesse? You don't have to do it. It's just to emphasize that we're using operations here. It's the only thing. But if you want me to change it, like say here or like this, or like this, and not like this, it is okay. No problem. Is that okay, Jesse? Oh, the parentheses. Oh, well. Uh, here for and and or, it is not going to be a big thing. Um, it is more like um, a trying to organize the operations, which one goes first. Sometimes you have to include another word. In this case, we don't have a problem because it is absolutely linear. But in some cases, you need to add like a, like a word. It is true that X is in, part, is in one of the first two sets, but it is not true that it is in the second, in the third set. So, you, to clarify. Okay, now, translate the following verbal statement into symbolic form. 
here it says the element X is an element of A and B, but it is not in C. The squiggly thing uh, is the tilde, and in a standard uh, keyboard, it is shift, and the one that is besides the one. Ah, oh, okay, nice, William. Zach has an answer, Jonathan has an answer, William has an answer. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, William. Steven has another answer. I'm going to tell you guys, there are so many good answers. I got one, two, three, four. So far, I have gotten four answers. Three of them are correct, and one of them is incomplete. The answer is P. I'm going to do it here. B and Q and not R. Now, to make things like to look better, I'm going to say that the P and the Q are going to be in parentheses, but it is not necessary here since you can go from left to right. Now, just to make sure that uh, we're talking about negative R, well, it's actually here we don't need the parentheses. It's okay. So, uh, it, it is carat, C-A-R-A-T. So, no, actually, uh, it's, uh, I guess you didn't even forget. The problem here is, I have to explain this, the word but. Some people don't know that the word but means and. The thing here is, you, uh, you're saying here something in a positive way, and then you're going to say something in a negative way. So the first part is positive, the second part is negative. When you change from positive to negative or from negative to positive, so many people use the word but. But it represents an and. Jonathan, tell me your complex question. Uh, because of the word but. In the first part, we're not saying, here, we're not saying no. It, I'm talking about English, not talking about logic. So in the first part, we, we're not saying no. So we say that it is positive. Here, after the but, we have the word not. So that part is a negative form. So the first part is positive, the second part is negative. Instead of using and in English, you usually, not all the times, use the word but. Yes, yes. In this case, we don't have the and, we have the but, but the but it represents an and. OK, guys, questions about operations, about translations? Uh, Jonathan. No distribution at all. Do not try to go with um, distribution because it is going to give it, it is going to, you're going to make a mistake. There, uh, there are rules for distribution, but the rules are not the ones that you use from uh, algebra. So, for example, if you have not Q or R, like the one that you have on, on, your, on what you, uh, you wrote. This is negative parenthesis Q or R. It is not going to be negative Q or negative R. Actually, it is going to be negative Q and negative R. Those are the Morgan's rule. But I'm uh, not talking about that here. It's better if you stick with uh, what you need. Any other question about um, the first part? 
operations, the translations, the, uh, the examples. Nice, I got an email. Jesse sent me an email for the notes. Yay! Okay, so give me a second. I need to copy paste what I did before about operations. Uh, I probably got it, but um, probably the, the system that I'm using right now is not uh, getting them. I don't need this. So guys, I'm just copying and pasting the, uh, the explanations that I did before about um, the operations. I can release this part. Mm. Computer, please. Yeah, so far I have only one email, the one from Jesse, and it was sent at 9.03. So my computer is slow, or my internet, or the server. I'm back, guys. I don't know if I told you, but no, no, I didn't tell you, but go to training has been crashing every single time I'm on it. It is horrible. Thank you, James. Okay, can you see my screen? Fortunately, we were on a break. Ah, William, yes, I forgot. No, actually, last week, for the, for the, uh, the two sessions that he had last week, nothing happened. Uh, go to training didn't crash, and my internet worked perfectly. This week, I have two crashes, and, but internet has been good so far. I hope my internet doesn't go away at, uh, in five minutes to make it a nice week. Uh, no, actually it is uh, Bright House. That, um, probably it, it is more, mostly because it is uh, like an old building and probably it's not uh, well wired. This building is like 50, uh, 50 years old or more. So, mm, that's my guess. Or probably the internet lines are old. You never know. Okay, now we're going to truth tables. Oh, you're welcome, Steven. I'm sorry, you gotta go. Okay, so now for truth tables. Um, 
truth tables uh, find all the possible uh, results for a compound statement uh, depending on the combinations of the truth values from the initial variables. So here we need all the possible combinations from all the variables, all, all combinations between the truth values. So I'm going to start with the negation. And the negation is probably the easiest one because, well, the basic statement for, for negation is not P. Well, we're saying if we have P, the negation is going to be not P. For this, the basic table is going to be uh, two columns and three rows. Always for truth uh, for truth uh, tables for tr um, for truth tables, the first few um, columns are going to be uh, to represent the variables. In this case, we only have one variable, so the first column goes for p. Then go for the operations step by step. So in this case, we only have one operation, the negation. So here, this is going to be not p. Okay, guys. What are the possible truth values that a variable can have? What are the possible truth values that a variable can have? True and false. Perfect. So the first thing we have to say is P could be true and P could be false. Now, the result here is the negation. What is the negation of the true? It is false. What is the negation of the false? True, yes. That's the basic truth table for negation. I think that one is too easy. Conjunction. The basic statement is P and Q. So I'm going to make a table. No, nah, no, it's not what I need. Table. Now, this table is going to have three columns and five rows. So, the first few columns represent the variables. In this case, we only have two variables, so the first two are going to be P and Q. Then, the operations. We only have one operation. That operation is the AND, and here we need P and Q. So, this is going to be P and Q. Okay, guys. Now, what are the possible initial values for Q? Uh, for P, I mean, for P. What are the possible initial values for P? True and false. Yes, William, the problem is we have here four rows. You're only, only telling me true and false that could fill out two rows, but I need to fill out four rows. Uh, well, Jesse, be careful because you have not T. Not T is actually false. Okay, so the values, as Jonathan said, are going to be true, true, false, false. What are going to be the initial values for Q? No, Jesse. Jonathan, thank you. True, false, true, false. Remember, guys, the idea, oh, James, you, you were correct as well. The idea here is to create all possible combinations of true, false between the two variables. If you say that P is true, true, false, false, and you say that Q is the same, true, true, false, false, you wouldn't have combinations here. You would have uh, true, true, and then true, true. You would be repeating. We don't want that. We want all possible combinations. So true, false, and there is no repetition. There is no, there is no other row where we have true, true. True, false, there is no other row where we have true, false. False, true, we don't have any other row where we have false, true. And the only one false, false is the last one. 
Okay, guys. Now, following the rule for the AND, for the conjunction, what is going to be the final result here? Jonathan says TFFF. Zach says TTFF. Jane says TTTF. Whoa, three different answers. One T, two T's, three T's. Jesse, TTFF. Did you read the definition that I that I typed? Do you remember? William, TFFF. Jonathan, both the statements must be true, and this is only in the first row. Jonathan, you are correct. William, you are correct. This is going to be true, false, false, false. So remember, it is true only if both single statements are true. So that's only the first row. It is false if at least one of the single statements is false. So second row, we have a false here for Q. Third row, we have a false here for P. Fourth row, we have false for both of them. So it is going to be false. Does that make sense, guys? Same thing, but now for this junction. Okay. Ah! Made a mistake, made a mistake, made a mistake. Okay, so now the disjunction is going to be OR. And I'm going to erase the values. So for every time you have two variables, the setup for the initial variables is going to be the same. So you don't have to worry, that's the reason I copy paste it. Now, we're going to be the final values for P or Q. Jonathan says T, 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 F. James says T, 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 F. Jesse says T, 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 F. Zach says T, 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 F. And Juan says T, 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 F. Nice, guys. Now, this is the difficult one. Duplication. Remember, this is an arrow. Ah, that's good, Jesse. Okay, what are going to be the final values for the implication? William says TFTF, Jonathan says TFTT. We have a tie right now. Zach says TFTT. James says TFTT. TFTT is winning 3 1. Is TFTT going to score one, once more or is the game going to. Oh, once more. Uh, so TFTT is winning 4 1. TFTT. It won. Only false when the first is true and the second is false. Awesome, Jonathan. Thank you. Actually, that sentence makes the whole table. Okay, guys. Questions about the basic truth tables. Those are the basic ones. So every time you have to, to check uh, for, for the operations, how they work, you should check those four. Nice, guys. OK, everything makes sense. Nope, I guess no questions. OK, I have here five statements. However, I don't want those two statements here. Now we're going to go for complex statements or really, really big compound statements. I'm going to be really nice with you. I'm going to say that the first one is going to be left 
as an exercise. I'm going to solve the second and the third one. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you, for this one, we're going to need, let me check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven columns and five rows. So remember, the first few columns represent all the variables that we have. We only have P and Q. So we have P and we have Q. Now, what are the initial values for P? As I told you, when you have two variables only, use the same setup all the times. True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. Uh, Jesse, the number of columns, it is not a given, but you should count the number of variables and the number of operations. Sometimes you're gonna have operations that are repeated. So you can simplify and take one, one or two columns from that. But for sure, you're going to have no more columns than the number of symbols, not including the parentheses. So in this case, we have P and Q, those are three symbols. Uh, the card, that's four. Negation, five. P, six. V, seven. The negation, eight. Q, nine. However, we are repeating P and Q. So I only count seven. Or I count the variables P and Q and then the operations. Or and negation or negation. Those are five plus the two variables, seven. But um, it doesn't matter if you count or, or, or don't count. Uh, you can include one more row or you can erase at the end, it's not a big deal. Okay, guys, what is the, uh, for the rows, I'm gonna tell you later. Um, what is the first operation you have to perform here for this, uh, for this compound statement? Uh, no, William. Remember that in math, we need order of operations. And order of operations says that parentheses go first. So Jonathan, you are correct. We need to go with P or Q. Okay, guys, what, is the val what are the values for P or Q? That's gonna be T, 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 F. There you go. What is the next operation? Oh. What is the, the next operation we have to perform? Not P. Where are the values of not P? No, Jonathan, be careful. You have to do not P or not Q, but before doing A, the OR, you have to get the negatives of the P and the Q. Yeah, so it's like going from the inside to the outside. Jesse, you can do not Q at first, which is correct. But, well, I just put not P. I'm going from left to right. So James and William, yes, not P is FFTT. The next operation, as I told you, is going to be not Q. Where are the values of not Q? FTFT, -F -T. there you go. Uh, Jesse, be careful. FFTT is for not P. What is the next operation? Mm, no, Jesse. The OR, we have to use the OR for the negations. So this is gonna be not P or not Q. What are the values for not P or not Q? Well, Jonathan said something. F, T, T, T.
Uh, Jesse, don't forget, uh, the only cheat sheet that you need is the explanation. Remember that the OR means that you have to complete at least one of them. So William, yes, you are correct, and Jonathan was correct. This is F, T, T, T. Remember that for OR, if at least one of them is true, then the answer is true. Okay, finally, the last one. What is the final operation we have to perform? Um, well, Jonathan, you're typing everything, so you're, you're trying to do the, everything. Here, the operation that we have to perform is the AND. Uh, Jesse, uh, I'm talking about the, the columns that represent uh, the, the terms here. So, we have an OR. So, for OR, we have, um, for OR, you know, at least one is, if at least one is true, then uh, the answer is true. Now, we have to talk about the column for not P, which is this one, and not Q, which is this one. By coincidence, in this case, uh, we have that those two columns are the previous columns, collectively. Sometimes you have to look for columns that are all over the place, or you have to look for different orders. In this case, we're talking about the two that are the two previous columns because it's it is not P or not Q. Does that make sense, Jesse? Okay. Now the next operation is the AND. So for the AND, well, the AND connects whatever is on the left with whatever is on the right. So we have Actually, we can copy paste. Ha 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 ha. Now, remember, we have in this case to use the third column, P or Q. We have to use the sixth column, not P or not Q, and use the AND between them. Now remember, it is an AND. The operation here is an AND. So at least, if at least one of them is false, then it is going to be false. Or it is only true if both uh, statements are true. So here, this one is false because here on the, on the first row, we have on the last column, false. So this is true because the third column is true, and on the sixth column, this is true. Next, this is true, and the last one is false. Jonathan, tell me. Uh, I'm waiting for Jonathan's question. It could be long, so he 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 may he may be typing. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to solve this. Nice. On the tables, can you highlight and or be mm, Jonathan? That's actually a good idea. Give me a second. Operation not, operation not, operation not, operation here the important one is the OR and here the important one is the AND. Does that work? Awesome. 
So guys, give me a second. Probably those are two uh, so basic that we don't need. But, you know, sometimes I prefer being like annoying and trying to do things, more things. But uh, Jonathan, as William said, it is an awesome idea. Next uh, problem, we have five columns and nine rows. So again, we have three variables. So the first three, uh, three columns are going to be uh, the variables, P, Q, R. Now, I'm not going to ask you for the values because this is the first time you see um, a table with nine rows. But the rule is, the first half is going to be true for the first variable, and the other half is going to be false. Then, how many true values do you have together on the first, on the first one? You have four. Divide that number by two, and group things two by two. True, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. Again, how many true values do you have together? You have two values. Divide that number by two, one. So you're gonna have one true value and then one false, one true, one false, one true, one false, one true, one false. That's the main idea. First column, half and half. Second column, half of the number you got before. Next column, half, of the value you got for the previous one and keep going. Half and half and half and half. What is the first operation we have to perform here, guys? I'm not gonna tell you yet, Jesse. What is the first operation we have to perform? Yes, P or Q. So we're focusing on the OR. So what, is, what are the results here? No, Jesse. No, William. Yes, Jonathan. True, 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 false and false. What is the next operation we have to perform? The implication, yes. So we need P or Q implies R. Now, don't forget, we're talking about implication. So be careful here. That This is for a question that uh, we were, uh, somebody got before. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be using the previous two columns. However, be careful. The first column that we have to use is the fourth column, the one for the OR. And then we have to use the column for R, the third column. What are the results here? For the implication, and remember the rule. For implication, if the first one is true and the second one is false, everything is false. James, T, F, T, F, T, F, T, T. Sack. T F F F F T F T T. You have an extra uh, an extra value. William T F T F T F T T. Guys, you are correct. T F T F T F T T. So remember, if the first one is true and the second one is false, it is false. That happens here on the second row. The first one is true, and then the second one is false. 
So this one is false. Then on the fourth row, the same happens. The first one is true, the second one is false. On the sixth row, the first one is true, the second one is false. If you check all the other rows, everything is true. Does that make sense, guys? Questions, guys? No, uh, hold on. Okay, Jesse, what do you mean by which calls? Which columns? What do you mean? P and Q, what are you talking about? Oh, okay. To determine the the implication, you mean, Jesse? Okay, for duplication. First, P or Q, so that is the fourth column. That's the first column we're going to use. And that implies R. R is here on the, third, on the third column. So you have to use the fourth implies the third. Does that make sense, Jesse? Okay, so now I was typing here. Every truth table contains two to the n rows where n is the number of different variables. So if you have uh, two variables, p and q, then there are four, well, two to the two, which is four rows. And if you have three variables, there are two to the three, which is eight rows. And do not forget to include, oh, what happened here? And do not forget to include an extra um, an extra row for the labels. Does that make sense, guys? Um, no, well, Jonathan, it's better if you use number of, uh, the number of columns is, the number of variables, P, well, if you have P, Q, R, not P, not Q, no R, are not, uh, are the same variables. But yes, uh, the number of columns is not important because if you want, you can add one more, you can drop a one, the number of rows is the one that is important. Oh, yes, yeah. Two to the three is two times two times two. And two to the four is two times two times two times two, four times. Okay, guys, questions about truth tables before I go to equivalence.
Okay, guys, equivalence. That means that two compound statements have the same final result or the same final column, even though they could be different. Uh, the expressions could be different, but if the last column, if the final column is um, uh, the values are the same, then they are equivalent. I hope I didn't make a mistake. Oh, yeah, I made a mistake. Okay, let's try something here. Hmm, give me a second. I'm gonna try to do something. Give me a second, guys. Now my computer is slow. Yay, 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 yay. No, I made a mistake. Okay, no, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, no. Oh, okay, that's good. For example, if I have not P or Q, and if I have uh, not P and not Q. Can you tell me, are those two uh, compound statements are equivalent or not? William says no and Jesse says that he thinks so. Okay, so what we have to do is create the truth tables. So, really quick, for the first one, I need four columns, five rows for the first one. Yeah, you know what? Okay, so first we have P, we have Q, so the initial values are true, true, false, false. For Q, true, false, true, false. First operation we have to perform is not P. So not P is going to be false, false, true, true. And then the final operation is not P or Q. Um, I need to change the color. So there's gonna be, here we need the or, and here we need the not, perfect. So the values are going to be, um, this is or, so this is gonna be true, this is gonna be false, this is gonna be true, and this is gonna be true, okay. For the second one, I need a table. In this case, we need five columns and five rows. Okay, so we have P, we have Q. The first operation we have to perform is not Q. Then we gotta go for P and not Q. And then this is gonna be the negation of P and not Q. Okay. Initial values for P, true, true, false, false. Then for Q, true, false, true, false. Then not Q is going to be false, true, false, true. Now P and not Q. P and not Q is going to be false here, true here, false here, and false here. Remember, uh, here we're talking about the and, P goes on the first column and not Q goes on the third column. And now this is the negation of the previous one. So this is gonna be true, false, true, true. And as you can see, the final values are the same. So the statements are equivalent. 
So therefore, uh, the statements are equivalent since the final results are the same. Oof. Give me a second. I have to do something here. Okay, William, here what we care about is about the last column. So let me go to the tables, and I'm going to say that this one is, for example, yellow, and this column here is yellow. So the la if, uh, what we care about is the last column for each one. If those two columns are the same, then the... Um, uh, the statements are equivalent. The last column of both are the same. Yes. Does that make sense, uh, William? Uh, okay, William. That's good. Okay, guys, one more thing. We're going to go with arguments. This is probably a little bit confusing. An argument is a set of compound statements called premises, which are assumed to be true always, to always be true. And those premises should imply a conclusion. In some cases, like in the quiz, you have to check if the if the conclusion is valid. Uh, from the premises given. In some other cases, you have to find the correct uh, conclusion from the premises. Okay, so remember, we have a set of compound statements and those are going to be premises. The premises are always, and remember this, they are always true. When you have an argument, the premises are always true. So here, for example, I have this. If the temperature is below zero, then Manuel's car will not start and he has to walk to work. Manuel had to work today, therefore it is below zero. So, uh, I can tell you this, uh, the conclusion always goes after the word therefore and the premises are separated by periods. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange this and I'm going to say that this is the first premise. Now, the second premise is Manuel had to walk to work today. So this is premise two. Now, make a line. And with the word therefore comes the conclusion. 
Now be careful because the symbol for the conclusion is going to be column dot. Uh, the symbol for therefore is colon period. Okay, so this, this is how it looks. Now the question here is, if premise one is true, if premise two is true, is it always true that the conclusion is true? Uh, William, uh, actually, be careful. Yes. Actually, well, if you're saying that, hey, William, if you're saying that P is the first premise and Q is the second premise, yes. That's kind of okay. However, you have things that are related. Each one of the premises could be a compound statement. So, for example, on the first statement, you have, uh, he has to walk to work. And on premise number two, you have, again, the same thing. He had to walk to, uh, to work today. So it's going to be more uh, bigger. So for example, the first statement could be P implies Q and R. The second premise is going to be only R. And the conclusion is only P. Now. If all the premises are true, is the conclusion always true? Yes, he said no. Sack says yes. Ah, okay. So again. If all the premises are true, is the conclusion always true? Yes, no. Why not, Jonathan? Because he says no, why? Okay, awesome, awesome, Jesse. If the answer is yes, the argument and the conclusion are valid, and if the answer is no, then the argument and the conclusion are invalid. No, okay, William. Yes, okay. In this case, uh, for this example, there could be more reasons uh, for um, for walking to work besides um, being below zero. So the conclusion is not valid. So the argument, well, actually, so the conclusion could be false so the argument is invalid. Does that make sense, guys?
Okay, guys, questions? Okay, William, that's a good question. So let me copy paste. Well, actually, I'm going to say P is going to be uh, the temperature is below zero. Q would be uh, Manuel's car will not start. And R could be uh, Manuel has to work, has to walk to work today. So you can represent this as a P implies, well, if P implies uh, Q and R, that's the first premise. The second premise is R, then we conclude P. So this is one way to do it. The other, uh, this is the, the way to show it using the premises. Now, you can do this. You can create a truth table here. To create a truth table, join all the premises with AND. And put, put them all inside braces and connect the premises with the conclusion using the implication and create the truth table. So that would be something like this. Uh, in braces, I have P, no, no, actually, in parentheses, I'm, no, I need braces. Uh, P in Okay, guys, you could have you could have left. It wasn't a big deal. I was just explaining something else that is not that important. But I was actually done. Yeah, you lost me again. But well, it's not a big deal. So I'm finishing here. So here, those are the premises inside inside braces, and then the implication it implies the conclusion. If the result, if the final result, oh, the screen isn't back yet. Sorry, my fault. Okay, so this is the translation to um, to a truth or to a um, compound statement. So if if the final result or if the final column is 
all true, then the argument is valid. If there is at least one false value, then the argument is invalid. OK, guys, questions? Awesome, Jonathan. OK, guys, so if you have no questions, you can go. You're free to go. Enjoy your night, probably uh, in bed, probably playing games, probably watching TV. But enjoy after this nice class. Uh, who is asking for the email? James. I see James there at 9.57. You're welcome, James. Oh, there are two James. James Lex, James Needham. Oh. Zach, yes. Yes, James, you were here last night. But I mean, I, I have two Jameses today. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, guys, have a good night.